Well, hey, everybody, welcome to the Fab Four podcast brought to you by our new sponsor, Hatcher Auto Sales. So uh, uh, just uh, give them a little plug there, a little Hatcher Auto Sales. Frankie wouldn't come get his T-shirt today that they provided. I, I was with my mother-in-law today. Yeah, I didn't have time to come Frank. out there, man. So, Y'all made that uh, new school too far out there. I was downtown. I, I couldn't make it. <laughs> So uh, Hatcher Auto Sales is our new sponsor for the Fab Four spo- uh, podcast. So we'd like to thank them for coming on board. Uh, also tonight, our special guest is Austin Newton, and uh, most of you will probably recognize Austin and remember Austin if you're any if you're around the Camelsville area and the uh, Madison uh, County area around Richmond, Kentucky. So uh, Austin, welcome to the show. Appreciate you guys having me on. It's good to see you all. Well, it's good to see you. You're looking all bright and cheery. And uh, I commented that uh, Austin uses the same barber that I do. We've kind of got the same hairstyle. So uh, I don't know what that's a sign of of just bad bad genes or just good hairdos. I'm not really sure. It's a sign of old age and being a head coach, I think. (laughs) Amen to that, brother. Amen to that. (laughs) Well, also, what we're going to do here is we're just going to kind of go like a round robin, just talk a little bit and okay. kind of get uh, kind of get, get to know you again and, uh, and, and kind of catch up with what you've been going sure. on, or what's going on in your life and all that kind of good stuff and basketball. So we'll just let Alec go first. Alec, you throw it out there for me. All right, Austin, uh, just give the fans a little bit of a bio on yourself, where you've been coaching and everything. Sure. Um, I grew up in Campbellsville, Kentucky, proud alum of Campbellsville High School and Camels, I went on to uh, EKU and played basketball for Travis Ford. So Travis was the coach at uh, Campbellsville University when I was in high school. He was recruiting me to come to uh, Campbellsville University in my senior year. He got the job at Eastern. Uh, so I followed him up to EKU, uh, played four seasons uh, for Travis there at EKU, made the NCAA tournament my senior year. Uh, got to play against the University of Kentucky. This was uh, 2005 up in Indianapolis. And, Played them really tough, and Travis, uh, after that game and after that season, he got a new job at the University of Massachusetts. Um, and I was lucky enough to, after I graduated, to go with him again uh, and be a video video coordinator for him at UMass for uh, for three years. So didn't know that I wanted to coach in college, uh, studied public relations, really had no idea what I wanted to do, and just had a quick opportunity uh, out of college to go uh, coach in the Atlantic 10, which – uh, is is big time basketball conference. So uh, you know, I'm two years old. I'm moving away from Kentucky, where I've lived my whole life. I uh, had a little uh, sweetheart from EKU that did not make the trip with me. So I was gone for three years, and it was a big uh, it was a big adjustment for me. And I missed uh, missed the South, missed being home. So ended up moving back. Um, got out of coaching for a couple of years. Tried some different things. Uh, work for my those of you that know my family we're big into the Lee's famous recipe restaurants and I tried my hand at Lee's and I didn't do a good enough job for my dad down there in Danville so I thought I needed to get back and get back into coaching and so I, I went and had a conversation uh, over at EKU with Jeff Newbauer, who was the head coach there for 10 years and uh, slowly worked my way into being a, a true assistant coach so I was assistant operations director there for a couple years and then I was a, a true recruiting assistant for five. Uh, so we had a good run there. I knew at some point uh, that Jeff Newbauer, we'd either get fired, we'd do you know poor enough to get fired, or we'd do well enough that he would get a better job, and I would have to make a decision if I wanted to you know move my family again. And and that's what happened. We ended up going to the NCAA tournament, playing uh, Kansas, played them very tough. And then the following year, he got a job at Fordham. Uh, so I had an opportunity to to be an assistant. Uh, but just couldn't see myself uh, moving my family from Berea up to the Bronx. So I uh, decided to stay put. And yeah, that's a big, a big transition right there. Yeah, I was actually – I was named the interim head coach at EKU for a couple weeks. Uh, so I can always put that on my resume that I was the head coach at Division One level at least for at least for two weeks. Uh, and then they ended up hiring a, a new coach. And I, I transitioned into a fundraising role there at EKU where I did some athletic fundraising. Uh, for three years. Uh, again, started missing coaching like crazy. And this opportunity here at Madison Southern uh, down in Berea, where my wife's from, where she went to school, uh, came available a couple years ago. And I, I jumped at it and I've enjoyed uh, every second of it. It looks like you've got quite a sub. Uh, I mean, just I've seen some of your videos and stuff online that you all, you know, your fans post. It looks like y'all got a good following down there at Madison Southern. 
we've done a good job the last couple of years of creating a, a culture. And this, this school reminds me a lot of Taylor County, to be honest with you. I, I don't know what the enrollment is at Taylor County uh, these days, but ours is about 1,200, and it's a very similar demographic to Taylor County. So everything about it reminds me of, you know, growing up in Campbellsville, right, reminds me that the school does of Taylor County, just great people, great leadership. Um, and it's, it's a really good job. The only problem is we're in the 11th region, uh, which is, you know, the hardest region in the state. Absolutely. Absolutely. This, this school's been here for 31 years, and we've never – We've never won a regional tournament game, 31 years. So that's one of our immediate goals is try to find a way to get to the region and just win a game in the regional tournament. Gotcha. Scott? Austin, uh, you know, down here, as you very well know, you got two schools, rivalry, no matter whether one team's really good or not, doesn't matter. It's a big rivalry. Where you're at, I know Madison Central's probably considered a big dog. I mean, that's, you know, a big school in the 11th region. It's in your county. How's the rivalry between the two schools where you're at now? It's really good rivalry, so uh, we haven't beaten them many times. Uh, I wish we could, you know, become more competitive, and I think we will. Uh, the problem is in our district, we're in the 44th district, we still do a blind draw uh, to, to seed our district. So uh, we had a really – I had a really good senior-laden team last year. We had 11 seniors. We were playing our best basketball at the end of the year. We had won our last five. I mean, we were just shooting the – we were shooting the ball really well. And so if we'd been in a normal district, you know, we probably would have seeded and we would have played a team. We wouldn't play Madison. We drew Madison Central first game of the district tournament. Um, and so, you know, we're up 14 in the third quarter and then they tied up in the fourth and ended up beating us. But I think it was one of those years where, you know, our team was experienced enough and we were playing well enough that we could have got to the regional tournament. If we, would, if we could have just got to the district championship game, we could have got to the region and, and made some noise. So it just – it's uh, – a little frustrating um, when you have, you know, a good team and, and then you, you go to a blind draw and you got to play against a, a team in Madison Central who's arguably, you know, one of the best teams in the state traditionally. All right, Austin, well, I've, been in a, I've been in a few of those meetings about blind draws. I won't elaborate on that one, McQuarrie. But um, <laughs> <laughs> is there a reason that you can elaborate on or maybe you can't why that district – refuses to go to the seating, which only makes sense to me, but I'm old and dumb and don't know much. So right. what's the reason? Um, so I've done a lot of research on it. So right now there's there's 61 of 64 districts in the state that are seating. So there's only three districts in the whole state that are, are still doing a blind draw. So uh, for us, we got yeah. us in Madison Central, then there's Bria and Model, you know, both all-A schools that don't have yeah. – as much to pull from as we do and I, I get it you know if I was coaching in one of those schools I probably wouldn't <laughs> I probably wouldn't vote to see it either yeah. um, but at the same time you know I went to Campbellsville High School that was graduated with 80 kids and I think yeah. all four years we won the district championship that I was there against Taylor Marion and Adair so I get the argument that you know you're small and you don't have enough but I've also lived the other side of it that you know through hard work and belief in yourself and your team you actually can do it so um, I just wish the state would, you know, I wish they would step in at, at the state level and say, hey, there's, you know, there's only three districts out of 64 that are that are doing this. It's just, I don't know. I wish I wish it would be mandated because I do think our school, Madison Southern, in basketball and baseball, we're affected more than any school in the state by it because we're in there with Madison Central and then we're in there with right. play schools. So it really affects us uh, as far as the seating and trying to get to the regional tournament. Yeah, See, I always thought when they, when they did that, Paul, was that you take out – if two of the best teams draw each other, and I know the other two teams may not be as good, all you're doing is helping the other schools because one right. less good team is right. going to make the region. You're, right. I, I know that it's good for those small schools, but it, right. it ends up helping out. Like around here would be, you know, North Harden, E-Town. But up there, it's the Lexington schools. So. Right. right. And I, I – you know, we, we meet on it every year, and even the coaches at Berea Model, they – you know, in their hearts, they know the right thing to do is to seat it. They know it and they say that, but when it's legal for them to vote that way, they're, they'll never do it. And I don't Right, know. right. Yeah, I understand it. Somebody at the state level would, would do something about it. But, I mean, it's been going on since the 70s. And so my question is, the vote is always, you know, the vote's always two to two. So it's two to blind draw, two to seed. Why do we always favor, you know, the blind draw? And it's because the very first time it was voted on, you know, it was a blind draw, so that's what they always go back to is the blind draw. Yeah. Even if they would alternate years of blind draw season. But I don't know. Yeah. It's frustrating. 
<laughs> well, let me let me take you back to your high school days. Uh, you graduated from Campbellsville High School. Well, you I think you graduated in two thousand one. One, okay, oh one. I was gonna say oh five, and I knew that one right. So you graduated in oh one. Uh, so tell, just kind of go back and relive some of that. Now you played for uh, Tim Davis over there. So what was it like playing for Tim? And that, the, you know, your senior year, you all went to the finals, I believe, didn't you? We actually got beaten in the semifinals by Washington. Semifinals, okay. So it was it was awesome playing for Coach Davis. I grew up, you know, watching him coach at Marion County and that. 1993 state championship team that he coached with Anthony Epps and Ellen Scott and those guys. That is like my all-time favorite team. I just – I remember traveling around and watching them with my dad and when they won the state championship, how exciting that was. And then to know that he was coming to Campbellsville and then I was going to play for him, it was it was very exciting for me as a player. Um, my freshman year, we had a really good team. Um, and we had a bunch of seniors. And we uh, we played North Harden in the semifinals. I'm sure a lot of people in Campbellsville remember it. But, uh, oh, uh, Coach Nude here, he, he missed a couple uh, big free throws down the stretch. We're playing with hard <laughs> over in Marion County. It's probably one of the best basketball games I've ever been involved in other than the outcome. But um, I got fouled with no time on the clock uh, in regulation. Uh, tie game. I got two free throws with zero time on the clock to to advance. And I think, we, you know, we would have won the region if I make one free throw. And I uh, was the fresh <laughs> Was that Petey Spalding? Did he play with you that year? Yep. So Petey was a junior. Petey had yeah. fouled out uh, in the third quarter. Uh, so I got stuck in there. And I, I played sparingly as a freshman. Didn't play a lot because we had so many seniors. But I got put in there and I, I made a couple threes. I mean, I had it rolling and the crowd was going crazy. And then uh, get fouled and uh, go to the line in the first one. I felt great about it. I mean, I, was, I felt awesome. And that, that sucker went in and it spun back out right at me. And I mean, it was down and out. And then I got I got a little nervous on the second one and, and short armed it. Um, yeah. And then we go on in, in the second overtime we had a Brazilian exchange student named Felipe Santos and he had oh yeah he had two free throws with one second tie game he misses them both and then I think the third overtime we're up seven with 52 seconds left and they still come back and beat us so it was just one of those nights that uh, wasn't meant to be for the Eagles but. It was just looking back. We had such a great group of seniors. It was Ricky McCarty and LaVon Lasley and those guys. Just a great group of leaders. And it just something I still think about every single day. <laughs> so do you use that uh, story? Of, does your Do your players know that story about missing that free throw? I've told it several times. And I, I hate to tell it, but we, we played in my first year as head coach here. We, we had a summer league game and a kid got fouled. Uh, we were down three. He got fouled on three. He had three free throws to tie it, you know, send it to overtime, no time on the clock. And he, he missed all three of them. And he's, like, laughing about it. And I, I just – it kind of it kind of irked me that he was laughing. I know it was a summer game, but I just didn't find it very amusing. So I had to go on and tell my story about why I didn't find that very funny. Um, and so they, they understand the importance of free throws when we practice them in practice now, how important it is to concentrate and, and knock them down because it's very important to me. Yeah, I was actually at that game, uh, set on the stage uh, at Marion County High School to watch that game. That was a heartbreaker. That was a tough one to swallow. Probably one of the toughest moments of my life, to be honest with you. I, I, I shut down. I didn't go to school for a couple of weeks. Um, so it was a defining moment in my life. And I think that's what high school sports are all about. You know, looking back at the time, it was, it was devastating. Like, I couldn't face my peers. I couldn't go to school. Um, but at the same time, it, it turned me into a man, and it really helped define me. Uh, I think I was top three in the state the following year in free throws, so uh, yeah. bounced back. But uh, it was a defining moment, uh, not only in my sports career, but in my life. It just taught me how to bounce back. Gotcha. Alec? Austin, talk about your time as a player and a coach at Eastern. Yeah, so uh, I got a lot of great memories at EKU. <laughs> I met some of the my best friends, uh, I met my wife there, and we got two beautiful children now because of it. So Everything that I have in my adult life, I, I owe to Eastern. I got to travel, you know, all over the country playing at Division One arenas, playing against the best competition. Uh, when I was coaching, we took a trip to Australia, uh, which is something that I've always wanted to do. Uh, got to – I was a part of the NCAA tournament game. I didn't get to play. I hear you guys always talking about these guys from Kansas who, who got to <laughs> the NCAA tournament game, and I know I didn't get off the bench, Frankie. 
I know. No, I looked it up. I looked it up. I was going to put you in. I said, I hope it got in at the end, man. I did. I didn't. But I was there, and I was a captain on that team. So it just goes, anybody that's watching this, you don't have to, you don't have to be on the court and play to be a leader and uh, to make an impact. Because I, I felt like I had a big impact on that team that year. Um, but got to play an NCAA tournament or got to be on the bench. And then uh, when I was coaching, got to – actually had the scouting report uh, in 2014 when we played Kansas in the first round of the NCAA tournament, which was uh, pretty cool. And so uh, the, game was <laughs> the game was actually tied at halftime, funny story. And uh, second half, we had turned them over 17 or 18 times in the first half. We played this really aggressive half-court man-to-man defense. And so uh, – Second half starts, and, and this kid checks – he's not a kid. I mean, he's a college basketball player at Kansas. Checks in the game, and uh, my boss kind of nudged me. He's like, who is that? Um, and he, I mean, he didn't look like the rest. Of the, he was a shorter guy. And so, like, I didn't have him on the scouting report. I had no idea who the guy was. NCAA tournament game. It's my scouting report. I mean, 15 versus two seed. And I finally looked down. His name was Connor Frankamp, and he hadn't played in, like, 24 games. Uh, but the point guard had turned it over nine times. So, Bill Self puts this guy in the game. And Connor Frankamp comes in, and he runs the team, settles them down, hits a couple threes, and basically won the game for him. Um, and so I, I kind of kicked myself, like, if I would have just found some clips on him or said anything about this guy, like, before the game, maybe we would have had a different outcome. But um, at the end, their depth just wore us out, and they were so much bigger. But we, we hung in there really well, and it was just fun to just be in the first seat of that game uh, with the scout. They had uh, Andrew Wiggins and Joel Embiid. It was just – uh, it's the atmosphere as I've ever been in in my life. So, real quickly, I mean, I've never known anybody on the on a Division One staff. When you say you use you, your scouting report, explain kind of what that entails. What do you do? How do you make that report? Yeah, so for uh, for usual games, you know, you would start looking at film maybe two weeks in advance. But, like, NCAA tournament, we found out we were playing Kansas on a Sunday night, and then we play on a Thursday. So, it's basically – you know, as soon as you find out Sunday night, you start looking at film after film after film. So I watched probably, I don't know, I stayed up all night that Sunday night. Because um, Sunday, <laughs> they grouped Sunday best. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but they were performing at the election show. Yeah. So I was telling my boss, I was like, I've got to watch Sunday best before I start uh, doing this. Scout. <laughs> so he let me He let me stick around and watch the concert. But I stayed up the whole night, didn't sleep at all, watch film after film. And then on Monday, well, you know, we had practice, and I it was on me to go to, you know, go to my coach and say, here's what I see, here's what I think the best game plan is, and then we practice it, and then we'll go back and watch the practice film and watch more of Kansas film and just try to tweak a few things and, and get a game plan together. But it's a lot of film. I was with Coach Newbauer for uh, eight years, so he really trusted me. He thought he thought I did a great job with the scouts, so he would always give me more scouting reports than he would uh, other assistants. Uh, and I enjoyed it. I, I really liked studying other teams and seeing what they did. Uh, but the funny part, you know, Bill Self is known for this high-low offense. Like, that's what he's done his whole career is they reverse it through the top. They try to go high-low. And we were playing this very strange uh, – it was almost like an amoeba man-to-man defense this year. Where <laughs> he just didn't allow you to make a pass. Like, if, if somebody made a pass, you were doing something wrong. You were supposed to be so far up the line denying that we didn't allow any passes. <laughs> So my boss was like, do you think Bill Self's just going to let us, you know, steal every pass? Do you think they're just going to throw it to us? And I was like, Coach, there's no other – like, that's what they do. They're, he doesn't do anything else. They just run high-low. And so, you know, the first half of that game, that's what they did. They just basically gave us the ball, and we turned them over 18 times, and we were just – they were playing right into our hands. And then uh, second half, they, they kind of flipped the script and started doing some dribble drive stuff and uh, what a – you know, what a good coach does, he, he changed his game plan and uh, finally took over. Gotcha. Scott? Well, Austin, my daughter was at that Kansas game. Uh, was she graduated. working for us that year? Or was it yeah. The, well, yeah. no, no, she wasn't. She, I don't know if she's working for you guys then, but she was at school then, and she went to the game. I remember that. Right. And uh, I'm going to tell these guys a story about her. I, I told her, I said, now, you need to be good, Austin. He's a good guy. He's from Kansas. He's a really good player. He, he's, he'll treat you good and all this stuff. And and uh, she said, I really like him, blah, blah, blah. And I said, y'all had y'all's first scrimmage when she was with the, with the basketball team. I don't know you scrimmage. And right. she said, our coach was so nice. And, 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 and Coach Newbauer was great. And said, they went at halftime. You guys must have stunk it up in the first half. 
playing somebody you probably should be beating pretty soundly. And she said, he went in there and he, he was saying this, it's all right. I know you're nervous. I know you're from this state. You're way, way far from home. And you got a lot to be nervous about. And I understand that. And she said it was about a 10 second pause. And then he proceeded to tell them, and I'm not going to say all the words that she shared with me, that if you don't do it, the blankety blank, 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 I tell you, you're going back to Georgia and you're going back to where. <laughs> and she said, I was welcomed into college basketball at halftime. <laughs> yeah, of the first scrimmage. Of the scrimmage. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I remember that scrimmage. Yeah, yeah, I think he actually he, he accused our point guard of uh, point shaving during that scrimmage. <laughs> <laughs> looking at me and he was like he's point shaving I'm like I don't think there's a line on a scrimmage game coach hey my, my, my real question though is that from your coaching tree so to speak starting with coach Davis obviously coach Davis the state champion coach and Travis Ford coach Newbauer anybody else you've worked with how have you adopted anything from them and what's your style now have you picked pieces from each one of them or or what's the style of Madison Southern? I've never seen you guys play. I, I knew you guys came down in one summer. I actually meant to go over there and watch you guys play, but I did not. Right. So the great thing, I've, I've only been around three coaches, Coach Davis and Coach Ford and Coach Newbauer, and I think they're all great. Like, they are three great coaches, but they're all so different. And so it's been great for me to be around each of them. Um, the one thing that stands out with all of them is how organized they are as far as practice plans, as far as film, just – all three of them are just great with organization, which is something that I struggle with in my daily life. But as far as a basketball coach, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty organized. Uh, the way we play at Madison Southern, I, I get from Coach Newbauer. Coach Newbauer coached for John Beeline, uh, who was at, you know, West Virginia and at Michigan, and he just tried to uh, run in the NBA. Um, yeah. But John Beeline is a phenomenal offensive coach, just an offensive genius. And I think the same about Jeff Newbauer. So it's, it's kind of like a modified Princeton. Um, and whenever somebody says, you know, the Princeton offense, a lot of people think that it's boring and it's slow, which is – it's just not the case. It's, it's a lot of threes. Um, we prefer three – wide open threes and wide open layups. We don't take a lot of mid-range jumpers off the dribble. Uh, we like threes and layups uh, offensively. Defensively, uh, we played a lot of zone last year, which I didn't want to do. Um, my first year we tried to play the defense that I was – uh, talking about that we played at EKU, which uh, helped us, you know, lead the country in turnovers for a couple years there. Uh, we just weren't athletic enough to, to play that defense. So I'm still, still tweaking my defense. Um, I have learned that uh, through all those coaches, like I'm not going to be one of those guys that is stubborn and going to say this is what I'm going to do and this is exactly how I'm going to play because your personnel just doesn't allow you to do that as a coach. Like, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to put my team in the best position to win, whether that's play 2-3 zone or uh, try to score 120 points a game, whatever I feel that uh, my team's strengths are for that year, that's what I'm going to adopt to. But there's still a lot of things uh, as far as a culture and a program that I take uh, from all three of those guys that have really helped me as a head coach. So uh, talk about what you've got coming back. I know, of course, COVID, you know, this is crazy time and uh, don't know when basketball is actually going to get to start and, you know, and if they're going to push, uh, you know, there's a lot of rumors floating out right now about things right. that are going on. But uh, your upcoming team, the kids you got returning, uh, talk a little bit about them and what you got and some of maybe your, uh, your better players and uh, role players and things like that and what you got coming back. Yeah, so I'd say we lost 11 seniors, so we lost a ton. Uh, I do have a big kid coming back that played a lot for us last year named Nate Turner, um, who's a very skilled uh, – he's going to be a junior, very skilled five-man, can step out and shoot it, has nice touch around the basket. Uh, I have a point guard, a couple guards, uh, Jaden Adams, who didn't get a lot of time last year just because we had so many older guys that, that played. And then a kid named Walter Smith, who's a very athletic, really good uh, prospect in football. Um, both those guards are really good and athletic. Um, other than that, like we, uh, it's wide open. Uh, our freshman team um, had a really good season last year. They went 15 and three, won 15 games in a row at one point, uh, made it to the finals of the 11th regional tournament, got beat by Great Crossing. So we do have a good group of uh, freshmen that will be sophomores, some very talented kids. Got a big kid that's 6'4", like 295, that's a hoss down low named Brett Ursland. Um, so our, our future is very bright. Next year it's going to take us a little time to get going. And that's why I hate that we missed summer ball because it would have been a great opportunity to get 
a lot of these younger kids thrown into a varsity game and, and get some experience. But I know that uh, a lot of teams are in the same same situation. Yeah. But just with, with us losing so much and having so much younger talent that haven't experienced varsity, it's just going to be tough for us to adjust without having that summer summer season. Yeah, Alec, Coach, uh, I know you talked about it a little bit, but Frank, they shot seven hundred threes last year. I just looked at it. I up. was seven hundred. Why was why was I not born and playing now? They would let me <laughs> shoot. I had to throw it to the guys that could really play. All I could do was Wait, shoot. We didn't, we didn't have a three point line. Remember? I know, <laughs> but I could shoot it out there. Nineteen eighty five. There was not a three point line. Throw it inside, and if you shoot, miss, you're coming out. That was what it is. Even if I could play a little bit, don't matter. <laughs> so we had a. I think we shot thirty nine percent from three. So when you take a lot, Ooh, that's you know, good. If you can make 39% of them, it's a pretty good percentage. So Absolutely. Don't take in a bunch of threes if you're not going to make them. But if you're going to make them, then keep keep shooting is how I've lived my life. Um, <laughs> going, going back to adjusting your personnel, like this next season, I don't know if I've got to – I don't know if we'll be able to shoot that way. So we may have to get the ball inside more than what we're used to. Uh, but last year was a lot of fun when – uh, you got shooters all around. We just didn't have a lot of guys last year that could go off the bounce and create. So we had to had to be very creative with our offense and getting guys open looks, um, which we were able to do. Yeah, Scott. Awesome. Help me out. My, I'm getting old and I can't remember very well. So, so when you're a freshman, you guys lost in the semis to North, and I know that you guys had multiple chances to win. It wasn't just that a young player like you missed a couple free throws. I was at the game like McQuarrie was. Y'all had many, many ways to win. It just didn't didn't go your way. Right. Am I thinking right that the next year's when Petey broke his leg in the game? So my sophomore, or was that his sophomore year? One of those years, I thought Campbell was going to win no matter what. And I'm yeah. at the game, and Petey made some kind of great move, and all of a sudden he went down. He broke his leg. I think I was, that might have been my eighth grade year when we made. Was that your eighth grade year? Yeah, against uh, we were playing Central Harden, maybe something. Uh, I can't remember. I just remember him going down. I'm like, man, it's cursed. Yeah, so my sophomore year we played – I think we played – it was over at Hart County. We played E-Town. Um, and they had the big Sexton boy and I think Antoine Barber. and uh, yep. They played a triangle and two on Petey and I. We weren't prepared for it at all, and they, they got us pretty good. Um, in my junior year, we it was over at uh, Green County, and I think Nelson County beat us maybe in the first round in overtime. And then my senior year, uh, we got beat by Washington County in the semifinals and we had a, we had a good team my senior year with Steven Squires and Anthony Alexander and Bronson and uh, Ryan Atwell like we had a good enough team to to have a chance and I never forget Artie Braden was coaching that game and every time I dribbled over half court they'd send at least two guys three yeah, yeah. And give it up and it was hard to get it back so um, both you know my sophomore year and my se uh, senior year uh, coaches did a pretty good job of game plan and taking us out of what we wanted to do. No, the the worst beat probably, other than me missing the free throws, was my senior year. Um, of course, we're eligible to play in the All A State tournament that's at EKU, and we had played in it a couple times and got beat by Harlan. We drew Harlan both times. My sophomore, and my junior year, my senior year, I really thought we had a chance to you know to win it all at the state you know at the state tournament. And the the Class A region was actually at Campbellsville High School that year, and so we're playing Fort Knox in the first round. And uh, I fouled out with about three minutes left. But anyway, we're down two with uh, six seconds left. I think Ryan Atwell comes in and makes a layup to tie the game to go to overtime. They throw an inbound pass, and a kid named Stanley Sherwood shoots one from about 85 <laughs> feet. And as soon as it left his hand, I knew it was going in. And it did. I mean, he just walked it off on our home court, first round of the All-A region. And uh, so we didn't get a chance to, to do that. So took some, took some bad beats there in high school. <laughs> Well, again, Sometimes you le you learn a lot from those things, and it makes it a little bit better in the long run. That's right. Or at least that's the way we look at it. I know it's frustrating now. Yeah, I think Rick Patino now guards the uh, the out of bounds pass. <laughs> yeah. You know, gets his hands right. Um, well, this is one of those deals where we laid it in, and it wasn't a, they just threw it in real quick, and he. Yeah. I mean, they didn't have <laughs> a second and a half. I mean, it was just one of those bang bang. Like yeah. as soon as he let it go, I I was looking from the bench, and I was like, that's going in. Sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the bug. That's right. Hey, uh, real quick, Austin, uh, we were talking about your, your high school days. Now, you know, obviously, 
you know, I coached at Taylor County. I actually coached against you in middle school. I mean, you, you, so did I. No, y'all, and y'all wore us out. I mean, you know, uh, you and uh, I think it was Aaron Anderson was he right on? Yeah, uh, Aaron. Yeah, same yep. time. I mean, golly, just some good players back in those days. Um, what were some of the best, or maybe maybe there's not um, for us, but what were some of the best rivalry games with Taylor County that you remember? So I I never lost to Taylor County in basketball. <laughs> I don't know if from I'm talking from seventh grade on. I, I never lost a game to Taylor County in basketball, which I'm certainly proud of my senior year and I just watched this game when I was home uh, a few weeks ago my senior year we played the district tournament over at uh, Adair County and uh, Taylor had you know Jeremy Taylor and Clint Graham uh, Josh Cox and those guys and I think that was the moment I, I remember I was talking to my mom we didn't have school that day for some reason and Taylor County had a pep rally I think coach Young was coaching and they were fired up saying this was our this was the time that we're gonna you know turned the tide, and, and they played us, you know, they played us really close. The other games throughout my high school career were never, never really close. But that was a knockdown drag out, and I think Robert Rich, I think I fouled out of this game as well. Uh, you think I'd have a better relationship with the refs than what I did. I fouled out <laughs> of but I think Robert Rich hit a shot, you know, with a few seconds left there. But Taylor, that was, I think, to me, that was – because when I went on to college, that was when Taylor started, you know, beating Campbellsville more often yeah. and more regularly. Um, and so I think that that game right there kind of set the tone and kind of changed the momentum. Well, you all have – I mean, you all had a plethora of talent at Campbellsville. Mm -hmm. There for – well, your run, like you say, your middle school run on up through high right. school. Guys, I mean, yeah, Coach, you know, Clint Graham and all those guys, I coached that that group in middle school and just couldn't beat you guys. I mean, y'all are just – just dynamite. I mean, y'all just dynamite all the way through. So, uh, uh, quality, quality talent that came through there. I mean, Campbellsville has been – had quality talent for years. Even, you know, take those small districts, but Campbellsville is always – except when Scott played. And, you know, I mean, bad knees and all. I mean, you know, so you had to have, you had to have that weak link sometimes. Right, right. <laughs> I was the weak link. I'm not gonna argue. <laughs> what year? What year did you graduate, Scott? 1985. Uh, my role was to to guard the other team's best player. If I was wide open, I could shoot it. But I got to make it because if I miss a couple, they're gonna take me out. And right. I throw it to Eric Anderson. I throw it to Eric Anderson. <laughs> I throw it to Eric Anderson. And then Jimmy Taylor was there, and he was only a sophomore that, that year. And Darwin Taylor, Anthony Turner, outstanding players. Uh, yeah. But we had some really good players. Uh, we did beat McQuarrie all three times we played them. I'm just saying. <laughs> you just always. I know. Up. I know. You went to the finals of the region, but we did beat them all three <laughs> times. <laughs> Alec, you got any questions for him? One more? Yeah, last thing. Um, Austin, give your opinion on what you think basketball season is going to look like in the state. And then what have you been doing over this quarantine and COVID stuff? Alec, buddy, I wish I knew as far as basketball. <laughs> I, I, you know, I feel differently about it every day. I mean, some days I wake up and I just don't. I mean, I feel like we're back to normal. And then the next day I'm like, what are we doing? So, I I honestly don't know. I mean, I think football and volleyball and all that over the next few weeks is going to give us an idea if we can somehow get through those seasons. And I feel a little more comfortable. But I, I'm just not very optimistic, to be honest with you. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful, but just we'll see what happens over the next two or three weeks. Um, over the last month, since they've opened it up, we've been going three days a week with individual workouts. So I've got – you can only work our uh, team out in groups of 10 or less. So I've got three groups of 10 or less coming in uh, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we're doing some uh, skill work and some weightlifting and some conditioning, but still not allowed to do anything live as far as one-on-one -on -one or three-on-three -on -three or five-on-five. -five, but at least we're able to do some skill work. Um, luckily, we haven't had anybody test positive for the virus. Had a lot of people go on vacation and all that. And, uh, done a lot of things with our student athletes as a whole with our entire school as far as working them out in different pods on the football field. Um, but haven't had anybody test positive, which is which is pretty good. Has, has Madison Southern made a – or is that a Madison County? Is it all under one board? Yes, yeah, so Madison uh, Southern and Madison Central are under the same board. Model so has there been a decision made on virtual or in-person classes for Madison County? 
right now they're giving they're given three options they're given going back and they're given you know a hybrid option and then they're given a stay at home option gotcha starting back on the 26th all right scott coach i got one more question it's probably the right. most important question i could ask Austin, okay. tell us about tell, tell us about your kids i see some videos with your kids and if you don't mind share how old your children are and what's going on with them and what you like for them to be into as far as sports in the future for them yeah I'm glad you asked, Scott, because I love basketball, I love sports, but the thing I love the most is being a dad, man. It is the most absolutely thing in the world. Uh, I've got a daughter, Hallie, who's nine. She'll be 10 uh, here in a couple months. Um, and then I got a little man named Hagen who uh, is five. Um, Hallie has played softball, and she's also played a little golf. She's got a beautiful golf swing. I just can't keep her uh, too interested in golf. Um, but Hagen is, uh, he is ate up with sports right now. He's, uh, when I left the house, he had his whole room set up for the NBA and I had two reclining chairs. He had a concession stand. He had his Giannis uh, jersey on, like he's ready to rock and roll with NBA starting back. So he's playing flag football. He's taking golf lessons. Like he, he's doing it all, which is, it's just a blast to watch him uh, fall in love with it and uh, just to experience it with him. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Austin, that's all we have for you today, buddy. Thanks for uh, coming on our podcast today and sharing some old stories with us and uh, reliving some great memories. And, uh, you know, it, uh, I know uh, you've had some opportunities to come back to uh, Taylor County and Campbellsville. And, uh, you know, I know, maybe someday we'll see you back in a uh, either a red or a gray or a purple and gold. And uh, But we understand that uh, your family is uh, very important to you. And, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. But, uh, we, you know, we're always rooting for you down here no matter what color, even if you're wearing that orange and uh, – and was that royal blue? Orange and royal blue? Orange and navy. Orange and navy. All right, well, just know we're always rooting for you down here and uh, wish you good luck in everything you do. I appreciate you guys very much. I love being from Camelsville. I love love my hometown. I'm proud of it. Um, and you never know what the, what the future may hold. Absolutely. I appreciate Absolutely. you guys. You both have All right. huge influence on me and uh, appreciate the work you guys are doing. Of course, you know, I knew Austin when he was about nine years old over at my brother-in-law, Jamie No. And oh, also, yeah. you know, they they destroyed about everything in Forest Hills neighborhood. Yeah. Golf yeah. carts and run over people, dogs and stuff. I mean, they did they they, they were this wild child. We Paul, oh, I it. can assure I can assure you Jamie No did not do it. <laughs> <laughs> it was never his yeah. fault. That's he sure. didn't confirm or deny any of those rumors. <laughs> he didn't do it. <laughs> That'd be a good guest to have on here would be Jamie No. Oh gosh, <laughs> uh, I tell you. I mean, we, we would get some stories. That is for sure. Man. That's great. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Austin. Uh, guys, thanks for watching today. Our uh, Fab Four podcast is brought to you by Hatcher Auto Sales. Uh, if you need a refurbished automobile for his uh, Chevrolet pickup trucks, or GMC models, uh, check them out at 5911 New Lebanon Road. Uh, you can give them a call, call uh, Daniel Hatcher, 270-469-6357. Again, Hatcher Auto Sales. Alec, who we got next week? Next week we got T or Taylor County Hall of Famer Jeff Gum will be on the show oh. next week. We got some good stories coming. <laughs> oh, we got stories for oh. days coming next week. <laughs> All right, this has been the Fab Four Podcast. We'll see you next week.